The second question concerns how shall we preserve our love for Jesus? I find there are two ways in which we can do this. Speaking from my own experience, from the time I was baptized when I was 21 years old till today, I have really tried to preserve my love for Jesus Christ. By constantly checking my own life. Do I love Jesus more than this, more than that, more than the other thing? Can I honestly say I love Jesus more than my wife, my home, my children, uh, money, house, property, even my ministry? Some preachers, their ministry is more important than Jesus Christ. I say, God save me from that calamity of loving my ministry more than Jesus Christ. I've many times imagined... Uh, supposing the Lord paralyzed me or allowed me to be paralyzed, let's put it like that, and I couldn't speak anymore, I couldn't write anymore, I will never get discouraged. Okay, my ministry is gone. That's okay. I can still uh, lie down in bed and love Jesus with all my heart. The first commandment is not preach the gospel. The first commandment is love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. So never forget that. Many, many of us are discouraged. Oh, I can't preach like that person. I can't sing like that person. I can't play a musical instrument like that person. But that is not the first commandment. The first commandment is love God with all your heart, soul, strength and mind. Can you do it? If you can do that, you're a spiritual person. Even if you can't preach, even if you can't sing, even if you can't play any instrument. So you've got to decide that first. My main aim in life is to love Jesus with all my heart. Everything else is extra. Ministry is extra and doing things is extra. Everything else is extra. If those other things become more important, then things go wrong. And that's what's happened to many people. So I personally found in my own life that uh, two ways in which I can keep my love for Jesus fervent. One is by meditating on His love for me. It says in 1 John We love him because he first loved us. So the more we recognize how much he loved us, the more we can love him. So that's the first verse I would show you if you're not familiar with that verse. It's in 1 John and chapter 4 and verse 19. 1 John 4, 19. We love him because he first loved us. So the more I recognize how much he loved me, the more I will love him and the more I'll be able to love other people. It's based on recognizing how much he has loved me. So if you don't love Jesus much, I would say it's because you haven't understood how much he has loved you. You think Jesus loved you very little. You love also Jesus very little. And you love other people also very little. But if you really believe, I mean with words, we say, oh, Jesus loved me so much. Really? Then you should be loving him so much. And you should be loving other people so much. And if you don't do that, that proves you don't really believe that Jesus loved so much. It's just words. The proof that you believe that Jesus loved you immensely is that you love Jesus immensely and love other people immensely. Because that word says we love. We love him and we love others because he first loved us. So, we have to meditate on how much he loved us, especially on the cross. How much he suffered and died and how much he gave up to come to this earth only for me, for you. And uh, that's the thing, I'll tell you honestly, that's helped me. I've meditated on the love of Jesus on the cross for the last nearly 50 years. And even now I do that. It really makes me love him. I don't mean an emotional type of love which disappears You know, you see these movies of Jesus and you see him being whipped and crucified and you weep. And the next day you go and sin again. I'm not talking about that type of rubbish called love. That's not love. Uh, It's a love that changes your whole life. Where you meditate on the love of Jesus for you on the cross and you really love him with all your heart and you're willing to do anything for him. The second thing, that's number one. The second thing that's helped me to love Jesus much is based on Luke chapter 7 and verse 47. Luke 7 
verse 47 where it says in the last part the one who has been forgiven much loves much and the one who has been forgiven little loves little so if I want to I'm not saying that you have to sin more in order to love Jesus don't misunderstand me that's not what he said you say but how can I be forgiven much unless I sin much no you have to recognize how much sin there was in you that Jesus forgave, which is different from committing a lot of sins. I'll show it to you. You know, Paul once said, I don't want to show, take time to, you can look it up yourself. He said in Philippians 3, according to the righteousness of the law, I am blameless. He said in Acts chapter 23 and verse 1, I have lived in a good conscience before God until this day. But the same man who said I've kept the law I've kept a good conscience all my life. Also said in 1 Timothy 1.15, I am the chief of sinners. Now, how could a person who could say, I've kept a, lived with a good conscience before God all my life, according to the righteousness of the law, I am blameless. How could this man say that I'm the chief of sinners? That means I'm the worst sinner in the world. Have you ever felt that you're the worst sinner in the world? i felt like that many times. And I think the answer is in allowing God to show you the corruption of your own heart, of the flesh within you. You know, Isaiah was the holiest man living on Israel at his time, I believe. But when he saw the glory of God, he suddenly said, Oh God, I'm such a terrible sinner. I'm a man of unclean lips. And that's how John Paul felt when he saw the Lord. So, forgiven much means... Uh, you see, I feel that a lot of us, maybe some of us have lived fairly good lives on the outside. And we think it's only that wretched uh, murderer or adulterous woman or that fornicator and that guy who was divorced two, three times, they are the great sinners. And as long as you think like that, I tell you, you won't love Jesus. Till a day comes in your life when you see the glory of God and you see what a wretched, filthy, good-for-nothing sinner you are, then you will love Jesus. And I'll tell you honestly before God, I've seen that many times. Where God has given me such a revelation, not of my external life, which is very good, but my inner heart and flesh just corrupt like Paul said I know that in my flesh dwells nothing good. Romans 7 verse 18 in my flesh that dwells nothing good. You know when you see that what Paul said in Romans 7 18 you will see that there's no difference between you and the greatest sinners in the world. And then you say Lord you forgive me all this how can I love you little? Anyway, for myself, these are the two things that have made me preserve myself in love for Jesus. And I find that the closer I get to God in my walk with Him, the more I come to see sin in myself. Not in other people. I'm not here to accuse other people of sin. That's the devil's job. And I'm not going to do his job for him. And there are many believers doing that, uh, helping the devil with accusing the brothers. He's called the accuser of the brothers. He, he's got enough agents to do that, and I don't want to add to that number. But I want to see corruption in my own self, because I want to cleanse myself. I want to be like Jesus. So the more I see that, the more I see how much the Lord's forgiven me. He who is forgiven much, automatically loves much.